Yeah, yeah. Nice. Fucking shot. Shut up. <laughs> that was to Kim, by the way. <laughs> Hold the fuck together. You've either got this or you don't. The fuck were you thinking? Fucking focus. Don't fucking laugh. You were right. I can't control it. It's not possible. With what I've seen lately, I wouldn't put a nickel on what's possible. Now come on. I think it's time we found Comstock, okay? Can I do it once more? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, maybe you guys don't know this is that when you do voice work, you typically don't have two actors in the same room. It's just yeah. kind of no. done yeah. in isolation. And I really do get the opportunity to do something like that. And so then you take, again. Without being arrested. <laughs> yeah. that? But you, you know, we had this scene, and the, it wasn't just a challenge for Elizabeth, but it was also a challenge for me because, you know, you don't want Booker to all of a sudden go, I'm so sorry, and all of a sudden show that, you know, turn up and show his belly to her. It still has to be this, I just saw something that completely freaked me out, and I just realized that I really hurt you, so, you know, come on, just throw some dirt on it, you'll be all right. <laughs> and it, it was, it, I mean, you also have to, I'm gonna say this, in that, we were in a space of, oh my God, that room was so small. Four feet by five feet, maybe? Six feet by five feet? We were close, <laughs> we were real close. And so when she's looking up at me, I am literally, I mean, right in front of my right, face. Right in her face. And it, it got, I mean, we're, we're able to look at that now and laugh, but it was awkward. <laughs> and this was, was, I mean, really this was, awkward. this was the, the my callback, yeah. So this was oh. the first time I'd ever... And we'd, we'd like float over there together and go, ha, ah, did do do Let's have a treat. It was like the worst date of my life. Um, no, it was interesting too, I mean, watching that, like, I'm sniffling because it, it like makes me feel, it, it's weird because when I first saw this clip, when they were at, you know, saying, hey, this is what we're gonna show. I felt so uncomfortable watching it. But in a room of 600 people, it's it, funny. It's funny? <laughs> Which is again? What's wrong with you? It's really bizarre. But I mean, if you guys were to see this, I mean, I, I feel like it's so different if you were to see it individually into how awkward you feel just watching someone do this. But as an, and there's a part where I'm like, you know, it's weird because I'm watching, Saying like crying and crying, then like keep going, you know. It's just like, well, it's all of weird. all of the production crew was outside going. <laughs> they were freaked out. Is he gonna hit her? <laughs> <laughs> and, that's, and that's a typical thing. I mean, when you like Ken, Ken was saying, when you have these such a limited time, I would, this was the end of the recording session. My voice was like I was sick. I was exhausted. Like I did not think that. And Ken was like, we need to keep keep getting to this emotional level. And I, I really did not think I had it in me. Um, and, and that's where it's kind of a testament to this this collaborative idea that we're, we're telling you guys. I mean, this project genuinely has that. And we all were helping each other in the creative process. And that's, I mean, to have a team, like a team dynamic like that is, um, I mean, I'm really grateful to have. To we have all that. we all hugged it out after that, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a line where I think we are laughing over it where I'm like, you fucking psychopath. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's a good fun. Um, Ken, I, uh, obviously we, we've, we've seen how like intense that, that scene can be, but we haven't addressed the other thing. It's kind of weird, like the way it's like the street, it says Revenge of the Jedi. Uh, do you have any insight as to you know, sort of how that came about that you decided to have this shocking, shocking moment of course the demo? Yeah. So that scene actually, we originally started the, the demo, all Elizabeth was doing was healing a dog, a small dog, and the problem was is, A, it didn't read this tiny little dog, and um, we had a horse from the previous demo, this guy threw a horse at you, and Michelle was, my, my, my lead, my lead artist, like, another fucking horse, dude. Uh, and I was like, yeah. Um, and, um, but 
originally the scene was quite different. It was you, it the, the environment was transformed into a um, like a primeval forest. You really want to show Elizabeth losing control of her power, but the problem was the primeval forest didn't look that different from the forest that they were the little park that they were in. And we had worked, or Rational had worked on the game for about six months after Bioshock, which we never announced and never talked about. But we had a whole bunch of assets from it. And we were like, well, what if we were doing like a, if instead of a part, we'd be saying totally night and day. So it has to freak out Booker, completely freak out Booker, completely freak out Elizabeth. Well, something that they would be, because these, these are two characters born in the 19th century something that the audience would be quite familiar with, but they would be quite unfamiliar with, and would totally freak them out and be a fun surprise and shock for the audience. And we just happened to have all these assets sitting around, unused. And um, so we went in a day, our effects artist Stephen Alexander basically put together that entire street scene, um, and then we sort of knew that final, the final little touch to say what was going on here, and that's where the, uh, you know, the, the movie marks. Yeah, Revenge of the Jedi, not Return of the Jedi. The, the original, original title. movie. <laughs> it, it was interesting to see half of a rational knew that reference and half didn't. I, 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 was, oh. I was very ashamed of the guy. What was the song we ended up going with that, that's, that's playing? Oh, the Here's Your Fear song. It is Here's Your Fear yeah, yeah. Okay, because I thought it went back and forth. Because we're recording on. Like, <laughs> I'll shut up. I'm sorry. <laughs> So, I mean, did, did you guys have a sense when you were doing the EVO for that, just how dramatic that scene was going to be? Just no. that moment, hold on, like, the, the, the entire reality of the game just kind of drops out. No, and what's, what's funny is that was actually a, a, an earlier version of that scene was part of the audition process. And so, you know, you're, you're arrogant. I'm arrogant. You're not arrogant. You're okay. Um, but you, you, you think that, wow, what I just did was awesome, and then you put it in Ken's perspective going, that is so far off the mark. I like where your head's at, but you know to see to see that that specific scene develop because we do have a lot emotionally tied to it because we have all the experience. It's probably for me. I'll just take. Who's um, uh, It's my mom. Um, to 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 go from the point where it is you know from the primeval forest now to you know the street in the middle of the eighties. Um, we had no idea, and it was even not fully finished when we finished recording it, so the first time that we truly saw everything was at E3. So we sat down in that theater and we're just like you guys, just like, uh. <laughs> So, I was. Wait, 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 wait. It, it took me about a good five to ten seconds to realize just what had happened. Yeah. And it just kind of just moves in, I'm like, hold on, hold on this, this isn't right. <laughs> So, Ken, when we have the VO, I mean, what's, what's in that process of, of hearing that and then forming the character? Because, like, as, as opposed to Uncharted, which is mocap, you know, you guys aren't in the silly suits that make it look like that. It's just silly, yes. Um, you're obviously animating the characters and animating the scenes. What's, what's that process? And how much does the VO kind of guide you through that? Well, you know, what we do is we know, we, I write the scene as I originally intended, and then we go into the studio and we change it and we work on it. And then sometimes we find out that we need something um, different. Like you saw some of those bits there where Courtney was like wearing different outfits. That's because those, those sessions were two or three months apart from each other. And we would actually find little bits of each performance that, as we figured out exactly what the scene wanted to be, sometimes we'd have a performance that was great, but there was one moment in it that didn't feel as right, but maybe there's another moment from two months earlier that was better. So I work with, um, Justin and Christina in my office, who basically are great for the, they know every single take, and they are basically put candidates in front of me and say, well, what do we have? A little bit of this, a little bit of that, and sometimes we construct uh, performances out of a bunch of different things, and quite often it's not because of the problem with the performance, it's because what we actually decide we need to do in the, in the game changes slightly. And sometimes scenes, like the opening part of the demo, the very opening part where you, they're outside the store talking, I didn't, we didn't originally intend to even have that scene. We had no scene. And that was just a bunch of sort of ad-libs that we put together and, and made a scene out of, and probably out of two different sessions and 15 different takes. Um, but that's the advantage of not doing the, 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 um, the motion capture is because you have a lot of freedom then to, to, to mix and match that stuff, as long as the sound quality is in the same ballpark. No, I, I, I believe we have some demo of sort of the, the, the various stages you've gone through in creating a, 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 a scene. And we saw the demo. I believe it's when the songbird is kind of tearing off the roof. Yeah, you know, this is, I think it's kind of hard to understand when you see really polished stuff. You know, there's a process there. And we have, you know, like uh, George, our, our concept artist, you know, 
we work, I write the scene, and then we sort of work with the concept artist to sort of like try to get a, an, you know, to envision what it's gonna play out like. And, and then you sort of go from, you know, the very the pencil storyboards to early animations. And, and this, I wish we had actually even an earlier version of this, because this is just like a, you know, a, a, a grade box version of the part where Elizabeth comes in and stops the song broke. What's really interesting about the first version of this is the songbird was much more aggressive originally, yeah. the first animation that um, John Mankiel did. And he was driving the situation, and he was basically saying, all right, Elizabeth, come with me. And we decided, and this is after the recording session, would be a lot more interesting if the songbird was the angry girlfriend, essentially, or even the, the, the jilted lover in a lot of ways. And Elizabeth became the active um, driver of the scene. I think that made him a more interesting character. It made her a stronger character because of the, the um, Sacrifice was very much in, in her hand and, and of her doing. And then, you know, we have the final version of sound here um, that sort of shows all those elements coming together and making the final scene. You can see how it <laughs> So Courtney, did, did, did Ken have to say, like, okay, now there's this really big mechanical birdie thing that's you know, like leaning in. And You're scared of it. <laughs> I mean, a lot of times in, in, the, in the audition process, too, like Trarity touched on, like, there are these, like, this scene and the, and, uh, the horse scene where there, we didn't know what we were working with, and Ken was trying to describe kind of the, the indescribable, and, and so that we would know, kind of have this idea of what was going on. Um, so I, I really didn't know. That's why I think I was so blown away by seeing the demo. Yeah. Because that was when even even my best imagination didn't even come close to touching what, what Ken and, and the rest of the the, um, the people on this project actually brought to fruition. And one of the things that I really love about that, that again, you get to see the uh, the actualization of, of Ken, your intention, was that the so songbird is not looking at her. He's looking away from her until she says, take me home. And then he looks at her, and then his eyes change. And we shortened that scene because originally it was a lot longer. Songbird was torturing Booker. And because I had like fallen through this glass and I had glass all through my skin and he was just like digging in. And I loved it because it was like really visceral and I, I'm a glutton for punishment. I love to go, ah, you know. Um, like I haven't done that before. <laughs> But uh, it was really cool to see that, that scene really get tightened up and truncated because, and we talked about this, and, and you said it was like there was no purpose for it. it, it we, we, we also ran out of time. Like, yeah. that seemed like, we, like John Magnagio was working his ass off, and we just ran out of time to do all those bits. So that happens a lot of times. You run out of time, you're like, okay, what is the heart of this thing? Yeah. And, and it was really about, it wasn't about Booker and the Songbird, it was really about Elizabeth and right. the Songbird. So we just sort of truncated that part, and I think it made us wrong. Um, can the, I, I, I would say that any game you've ever worked on would be realistic in terms of the way that it, it presents human beings. This, I would say, is, is one of the more stylized I've seen. D d does that give you certain benefits in terms of getting that emotional read out of the animations? Because I, I don't think I can see that scene play out with something that looks, say, more like Call of Duty. I, well, obviously, the RPGs have to be done. <laughs> you know, the Songbird obviously is. So. Yeah. Exaggerated and ridiculous, but and, but you know it's a tribute to our animators that they can get that emotion, that very familiar like I'm not going to talk to you, turning your head away thing. That we've all we've all been in fights, you know, with our boyfriends or girlfriends, and we've all had that moment. And for them to do that with a uh, 30 foot tall bird guy, you know, I thought was real impressive. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> I, it's like, look, if I just describe it. I'm like, no, John, it's like you're out of a fight with your girlfriend, and he's like, yeah, it's not my fucking girlfriend. That's a giant 30 foot tall bird guy. <laughs> And, but no, but an animator, a good animator, will be able to take those beats and then translate that into, you know, we also talked about how birds turn their head. You know, they sort of, their head sort of tell, you know, turn really quickly. Also, he doesn't have eyes on, he doesn't look, he doesn't look at you, he looks on the side of you. Because the, the eyes are on the side of his head. So it takes a really talented animator to bring all those elements together, but also make them, everybody who sees that knows what we're talking about. We're talking about 
a relationship, a damage and damaging relationship. But you know, it's such a strange um, couple. I think that um, you know. It, it, sorry, what was the question now? <laughs> uh, no, no. Actually, well, also when say.